Hjertelig velkommen til et nytt program her på Israel-kanalen. Denne gangen så skal vi ta dere med til Jerusalem, og vi treffer her en som er veldig sentral i noe som heter Temple Mount Sifting Project. Welcome to the program, Saki. Welcome to our lab. Thank you. I've been here before with Gabriel Barkay when he was here and he was telling us some stories about the Temple Mount Sifting Project, but the guy that actually, uh, you know, kicked it off was you, because you found these treasures in a heap of uh, dirt in the Kidron Valley, right? Yes, uh, that was a long time ago already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's something that changed my life uh, since then. I was a student of archaeology, I was a third year, and I heard about uh, the removal of uh, those uh, uh, heaps of dirt that was illegally ex excavated on the Temple Mount, and I was curious to see what I could find inside them. So uh, I spoke to some people, and uh, someone who followed those trucks told me where they dumped it, and we went over and we started uh, surveying uh, with a few friends, and uh, this is how it began. Uh, so, and and uh, we, we were encountered by uh, objection from the authorities who tried to prevent us from uh, retrieving uh, archaeological artifacts from this dirt. And, uh, but this was absurd because we were trying to save what uh, after this was a very large archaeological destruction on Temple Mount. Yeah. And this, was, this is the remains. You know, Gabi, Gabi is... Uh, as a metaphor of this, that he says that it's like a corpse. It, it doesn't have the value like it's when it was alive, but but you have to bury it respectively. And uh, because, you know, in archaeology, it's very important to know what is the context of the finds. Um, but we still can retrieve lots of information from such uh, 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 debris, even the that the finds are out of the context, because we can date them by the style and, 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 uh, and material and techniques. And, and, and most of them we know, we can identify what they are, and then we, get, we can get like a general idea of what, of the, what was the intensity and, and type of material culture that, that um, took place at the site yeah. um, um, without knowing exactly what are the structures. And the Temple Mount was never excavated before. And, and, and this was a unique opportunity to excavate over there, but we missed that opportunity. Mm. So, but we, so what we can only do is take the debris that was dumped outside and try and uh, retrieve it many much as, as many artifacts we can and and, and try to uh, reconstruct uh, uh, the information that was lost as as, uh, as as much as we can yeah yeah how many uh, you know cubic meters are we talking about totally here we're talking about we're talking about uh, about six thousand cubic meters wow and uh, we and we managed to to, to save from that about four and a half thousand. Uh, uh, some of it was mixed with garbage and, and was lost. Uh, and, uh, and so from that four and a half thousand, we sifted till today about 80% of it. Mm. But so, in, so at the beginning of the project, when we saw so that the real, we have to sift a lot to find also unique finds and also. We have like we could do it because it's we have access to lots of dirt, and and we can find many finds. We can retrieve many finds. We can have like large collections and lot lots of data that we can la later on analyze with statistical uh, techniques. But also we realize that there's a educational uh, potential here yeah? because although we tried to keep it in a low profile, we didn't want uh, all the politics to be involved. Um, many groups heard about us. And they offered to volunteer and help. And then we developed like a, a program for volunteering. It eventually, became a two-hour program that people get an introduction and explanation about the archaeology of the Temple Mount and about what we, what we found. And then we, they do the sifting. And uh, and you know, there's nothing to destroy here. Uh, so we, we, we could, in five minutes we can explain the technique how to sift. They're not throwing any, any anything without our staff checking. Yeah. They uh, 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 sifters, and and and, uh, and 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 in this way, it actually also gradually became a, a, a tourist educational attraction in Jerusalem. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think you you uh, nailed it when you actually opened up for the, for uh, uh, the public to come and help out with it this way, because sometimes I've seen you know call for volunteers to archaeological digs, and you have to maybe sign up for one week, two week, three weeks, or whatever. Yes. Now you can come for two hours. Two hours. Uh, this is a, this is the advantage of yeah. this kind of thing because in a regular archaeological dig you have it takes time until you get to to know this work it's more complicated yeah. but here even if you didn't understand you cannot ruin anything we have our staff that exactly will, that will check it yeah and I mean then you, people also can come here and say that they've actually have been working on an archaeological project here uh, like yours uh, which they can fit into a, a visiting tour of Israel. From abroad, so that's very, very, very nice way to to organize it. When you when you uh, collected all this material, uh, I mean six uh, six thousand uh, uh, cubic meters. That is uh, a lot of truckloads. Uh, so as I said, we we save we collected four and a half of it. Yeah, some of it we got lost, and we managed to we have about three hundred truckloads that we managed to. Um, uh, save and we have it stored in different areas in the national park that we are working in uh, and and um, uh, and we saved it 80 percent we yeah. still have a few years to, to finish it but there's still a lot more uh, is, uh, heaps of soil that weren't removed from the temple mount yet that will be removed in the future so uh, we're looking forward to also sift them yeah uh, and that's another 10 years of work we call it in Hebrew what we're doing. It's an expression. It's called ants work. Yeah. And ants, it's like it's very tedious work. Mm. And uh, and uh, because it's so tedious, I mean, this is why we need so many people to help. And and uh, you know, some people that they don't have the patience, and, and they don't. Uh, we call it. We say that we, we challenge them. We tell them, and not everyone survives more than three buckets. Yeah. But those who do, after three buckets, things become more interesting. They start to get the idea. And, 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 uh, and they really help us. Everyone helps us in this work. Mm. How is the situation uh, vis-a-vis uh, vis -vis the, the Muslims today? Do they approve of what you are digging out of that soil? or They, they contempt what we're doing. Okay, uh, yeah, they spice They that. contempt what we're doing. I don't think it's uh, unimportant. Uh, 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 it's not, it's un we won't, they say... Uh, that we won't find anything, not one stone from the temple, mm. the alleged temple. This is ridiculous because in their own sources, yeah. that was the site of the temple of Solomon. Mm. So, um, so uh, tell me what you have been finding there. Okay, so every bucket that is sifted, uh, there's um, artifacts from the first temple period till today. Very few artifacts before the first temple period. We have some called from the Bronze Age. Very, very few, maybe less than half percent from all the periods before. And this fits very well with, with an, uh, the biblical narrative that the main occupation and activity of the Temple Mount began in the time of King Solomon uh, 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 during the first temple period. So, uh, so this is also nice to have this validated. And also, you know, there was some there were some uh, archaeologists 20 years ago trying to say that the temple was only built not in the time of King Solomon, but maybe in the time, time of King Hezekiah. And all the stories of King Solomon is a myth. It's an exaggeration. Uh, and, uh, uh, and not even one single pot child was found in Jerusalem from the time of King Solomon. So since those, that days, more were found in the city of David, but also in the Temple Mount, we find a very nice percentage of, of, of pottery from the, we call it the 10th century mm -hmm. and 9th century BCE. Uh, <clears throat> we also found from that period the seal from the, from the time of King Solomon, uh, actually the, mo the most ancient seal from uh, the first temple period that was found in Jerusalem, uh, which attests that it was administrative activity on the Temple Mount. We have an arrowhead. Now we have one arrowhead from this period, but considering that it's all in all Israel, only eight arrowheads were found from that period. That's also significant. Why so few arrowheads were found in that period? And we have, to, we have to understand that peaceful periods don't leave much remains in archaeology. 
we, we love to, we, what we find in archaeology is, is a destruction. We love destructions. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, this uh, um, distorts the, 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 the sampling. If we, we cannot learn for, uh, about the intensity of, of periods just by the amount of finds because there's lots of lots of uh, uh, factors that, that affect how many finds are found from each activity or each period. So peaceful periods or beginning of periods, it's very hard to trace, even though it was, it was a big kingdom. Yeah. Uh, but just, so this is why in the whole land there are only eight arrowheads, but we have also one type of mount. So this attests there was an armed force over there. Yeah. Okay, if we, if we go forward, uh, we have arrowheads from uh, the siege uh, of, 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 uh, of, uh, of Selecharib, uh, on, on the Syrian king. On Jerusalem during the time of Hezekiah, uh, we have uh, seal impressions from the treasuries of the temple. Uh, uh, even one seal impression that mentions uh, uh, the family of Emir, the family of priests, uh, that it one, one of the 24 family uh, of the priestly families, and and it says on this seal impression, it's Ilyahu, son of Emir. And, and we know about Pashur, son of Emer, who was the chief officer of the temple. Chief officer means he was responsible on the, on the treasuries. In Hebrew, it's mentioned Pakid Nagit. It's a title that, that those priests who were responsible on, on, of the treasuries. And this seal impression, uh, since it has, it was attached to a fabric. Uh, on its back, back input, you can see a input of a fabric. This also strengthened the, the assumption that it was uh, part of the treasury of the temple. Yeah. And, uh, to actually, this, this impression, this seal impression today, is the most direct evidence to the first temple we have in the, since the wow. beginning of archaeology. Uh, we get, we hope to find more. This is because archaeology is built. Only once you have written artifacts, then you can, you know, you know what they use. We, yeah. we have so many artifacts. Uh, architectural artifacts that we cannot say if this is from the temple or this is from the structure that surrounded the temple. Because we are dealing with the old temple mount, not only with the temple. So it's difficult. We have lots of pottery. I'm sure some percentage of them was used in the temple by the priests or by the pilgrims. But I cannot tell which. Uh, and uh, only maybe later on with the statistics once we finish the, the, the analysis. Uh, we have um, many uh, F uh, fragments of uh, terracotta figurines and all of them were um, broken in antiquity. The fractures are old. Uh, uh, and this is what it, it wasn't recently broken. Mm. And this fits what, uh, with the description of King uh, Josiah that he uh, actually uh, cleaned the temple and pure the temple from all the molten images and, and remove them and throw them outside. Okay. Uh, and he throw them outside in the Kidon Valley, but during the second temple period, some of the dirt down on the slopes came back when, during the time of King Herod, when they were, need, needed more fills, fillings to expand the court of the temple. Okay, so this is very interesting to hear about all the, these findings, but in the bottom line, you're actually saying that the Bible is true. There was a temple here during that time the Bible describes. Actually, there's no doubt about it. Even in, in, the, I mean, in the academic, the scholar world, even Muslim scholars don't doubt that there was a, a temple. There are some uh, uh, controversies regarding uh, was it from the time of King Hezekiah or from the time of King Solomon. But the first temple is un... There's no... It's, it's a consensus. Yeah. Uh, uh, and as I said, even in, with Muslim scholars, uh, the Muslim politicians, Muslim uh, 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 religious leaders, uh, mainly Palestinians, try to deny this in the recent years. But they're even denying their own, their own sources. And even for a booklet that was published by the Muslim Waqf 100 years ago for visitors, uh, non-Muslims, to, to the Temple Mount, says that this is, with no doubt, the site of, of, king, of the Temple of, of, of King Solomon. So uh, this is ridiculous to, 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 to um, try and, um, and, and, and try and, and confront these, 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 these um, theories. Uh, and, and, uh, but unfortunately, in the Muslim world, uh, 
lies are absorbed very easily. Yeah. When I speak to Arabs in East, East Jerusalem, not in the Palestinian Authority, you know, East Jerusalem, they have freedom, they could have, they have no censorship, they could read everything on the, on the internet and, 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 and have access to all the, all of the news. They really believe that it's a, a lie, or yeah. a Jewish lie, that there was a temple over there. Exactly. It's, it's amazing. Mm. And, 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 uh, but there's no, there's no doubt about it. I mean, no one really doubts about this, 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 uh, this, uh, uh, this question. Uh, there is, there is uh, 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 we don't know exactly, or we don't have proof exactly, where exactly within the Temple Mount the Temple stood. So, uh, yeah. We have traditions, we have lots of evidence that support mm -hmm. it. It was someplace in the raised platform, but, but where exactly we don't have conf uh, 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 firm evidence. No. Uh, now, in the second temple, so first, uh, in the first temple, we also have evidence from the destruction and uh, Babylonian uh, arrowheads. And, and, and well, the second temple, uh, first, that's the time that the coinage system came in. During the biblical times, the, the, the commerce was done with, with uh, uh, scarce metals. They used to trade silver pieces and, and they used to weigh them with weights, with stone weights. We even have some stone weights of half a shekel, uh, two shekels, eight shekels, even, and every shekel in the Bible, we know it, was divided to, to uh, units of gera. So we have the holy shekel, the sacred shekel, and we have the regular shekel. And, and uh, so from the archaeology, we know it was divided to 24 gera, but the holy shekel in the Bible says, it says it was divided to 20 gera. We have a, a, a weight of four gera, and two gera, and, and, and uh, so we have this way. But in the second temple, we started to see coins. And the first coins that were minted in Jerusalem are during the Persian uh, 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 Empire uh, control of Jerusalem, uh, when uh, Judah was a uh, district uh, in that it was, it was a province, a semi-autonomous uh, province in the Persian Empire, and, uh, and it had also its own coins, which says Yehud. Uh, the province of Judah, yeah. uh, uh, and it has a depiction of, a, of an owl hmm. on, on it. Uh, and these coins are very rare because they're very tiny and they are from silver. They are the first coin minted in Jerusalem, first coin minted by Jews um, in the 4th century BC. And we found uh, four, four coins like this. And this is about half of what was found in all Jerusalem district in the last 150 years of archaeology. Okay, that makes so, uh, the Temple Mount very unique. Uh, yes, but also because of the sifting yeah. of our technique of, mm. of, of searching. For, uh, and and, and uh, so uh, later on we have, uh, we have all the coins, many coins from the Ashmonean uh, dynasty. And, and we have um, coins from the uh, uh, Roman uh, procurators and, 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 and we have from Herod's uh, uh, kingdom, uh, we have... Uh, coins and from his uh, uh, disciples and we also have many coins from the great revolt against uh, the Romans and, uh, and one coin is very very exciting uh, it's a half shekel coin from silver these coins are very rare because uh, silver coins and it's larger than the Persian coins usually the people didn't lose silver coins they use uh, the bronze coins uh, and, uh, and if they lost it someone found it and took it and uh, and most of this, those shekel coins, half a shekel coins, uh, were found in antiquities market, in antiquities robbery. Uh, in old Jerusalem, we found maybe three coins like this. You have remnants of, of its burning during the conflagration of the temple. And it, on one side, it says Hatsia shekel, half a shekel. And you have a um, depiction of a goblet, some kind of vessel that was used in the temple. On the other side, you have like a stem with three pomegranates. And it says Yerushalayim Agdusha. Holy Jerusalem, and uh, so this is very was very excited, and you know the half shekel was uh, the coin that was used to raise donations to the temple, in, in the spirit of, of uh, Exodus, the people of uh, Israel were well, children of Israel was commanded to give half a shekel as a, a tribute donation to the tabernacle in the desert. Yeah, we, we also have lots of uh, fragments of. of very elaborated building decorations, uh, engravements from the time of King Herod. 
So as I said, we cannot say what's from the temple, what's from the surrounding, but, but you can see uh, the Herodian uh, art on them, and, and, uh, uh, and even very one large capital of, of, of a column this was probably in the eastern store. That's in the New Testament is mentioned as the, the portico of Solomon. Um, uh, we know that because of the style of the, it's, it's designed with the Doric order, and and um, uh, and this usually we, as the Muslims, they didn't remove large art, uh, architectural remains. They when, once they encounter them, they save them on a Temple Mount, or some store them someplace. But this one. Uh, and some others also that, that we found, they missed, they didn't notice, and they removed them because they did it, they did it very quickly because they were afraid they were going to be stopped. Um, and uh, so this is very nice. We have it in the sifting site on display, this in, uh, capital. Uh, speaking more about archite uh, architecture, uh, at the beginning of the project, we already started to find lots of uh, floor tiles in various shapes, geometrical shapes and various materials and colors. And uh, these floor tiles, uh, uh, and many of them also have um, are st from imported stones, yeah. because in Israel there's no marble, not there's no alabaster, and, and uh, usually it's, it's uh, we have in Israel limestone, different types of limestone or flint, and and and, um, and uh, so if we, we we see these colorful tiles with geometrical shapes, and then we realize this is part of an opus sectile floor. Oposectile is an archaeological term to um, a technique of paving that was introduced during the uh, Roman uh, uh, period. Uh, and uh, you can see it a lot in uh, Rome. Uh, and this kind of uh, paving is uh, doing uh, uh, creating patterns from geometrical shapes of, of uh, and, and various colors and repeating these patterns on floors. It's, it's a very, very lavish flooring technique because there's no plaster between the tiles. It was very precise. It, it, it required very high skills. And, and this is why it was limited to very small space, yeah. like guest rooms or bathhouse in palaces or, or very rich Roman villas. But Josephus tells us that the whole compound that was um, open to the sky around the temple um, was paved with stones of all sorts and uh, all colors. And use the same Greek term that is mentioned also in such a floor in the, in the palace of Herod. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then we realized, it. So, so, so maybe in the Temple Mount, you know, there's many un unprecedented uh, things that that, uh, that uh, took place in Herod's temple. It was the biggest temple in the, in the Roman world. It was the biggest temple, Temenus, uh, compound in the Roman world. Uh, uh, the royal store in the south was the biggest structure in the Roman world. How come in Judah you have those most magnificent structures? But we can explain this very easily because uh, in Judah there was only one temple. All the resources went to one temple. Yeah. And in the Roman world, in every city, you had many temples. So the resources were, were spread. This is why lots of historians speak about very highly about the Temple of Herod, and it's like the most magnificent structure that, every, that you will see that everyone would see it. And, and, and so, so was, our question is, was Herod's temple courts, around, open courts, were paved with this opposite tiller? Mm. This is a big question that we have, uh, because we find so many stones like this, and we managed to reconstruct some of the patterns, um, especially from the small stone that preserved well, uh, uh, and we can see by the corners and, 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 and the measurements, we, c we can know what ty types of patterns they belong to. Uh, uh, we had a volunteer, her name was uh, Frankie Schneider, that gradually became also an employee, and she, be and she became um, a researcher, and she became actually an, an expert on these kinds of, of, of stones, and she managed to reconstruct uh, uh, seven floor patterns that you can see over here, and we, that were uh, used at least seven. We know, probably there were more. Yeah. But she knew, she knew, we know these patterns from other palaces of Herod. Mm. 
Also there, it didn't preserve, but what was preserved over there is a negative in the plaster of the floor underneath those tiles. So we know the patterns. Uh, these stones usually are looted or are salvaged later after they're out of use. So what we find is only what was thrown. Wonderful. Uh, when you discover all this, there's one question I was thinking of. How are you funding this work? Uh, with private donors. The, the same way that, you, we, that we do this work, with the help of the public, the public is, is sending us donations, and, 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 and this is the only way. Unfortunately, it's not enough, because this is why we're working very slow. And especially the research, uh, we're working maybe in 15% of what we should in order to finish. We want to finish it in five years. We have a program of five years program to finish all the research. We have about 120 categories of the find that each one needs um, a researcher to be assigned to, to, to sort everything, document, and, and uh, analyze and, and write a report. Sometimes it takes one or two years. And, and uh, so we, we cannot fund everything at once. So this is why we're doing it very slowly. Mm. And it looks like this has become yeah, the task of your lifetime. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't expect so. It's already s almost 17 years. Okay, wonderful. Um, okay, so if, if tourists want to visit you and be part of this project, they can actually go into your website? Yes. The Temple Mount Technic project is now with Mitzpia uh, uh, So the, when you enter the website, notice that it's speaking about the Temple Mount. Yeah. So it's tmsifting.org, uh, um, Temple Mount Sifting Project. Yeah, I hope that we can be able to bring a group there later right. this, this right. in the fall. Okay, thank you very much for your information, uh, Saki. It was has been very uh, enlightening to hear about all these uh, things that you have found and, and, and the work that you do. Thank you for your time in this program. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Ja, det var altså det vi hadde for denne gangen. Jeg håper at du har lært noe mer om hva som finnes oppe på Tempelhøyden og dette prosjektet som går på å dokumentere alle disse funnene. Og her får vi altså se at dette her gjør at Bibelen det blir en levende og sann bok. Tusen takk for at du har fulgt oss på gjensidig neste uke. Takk for nå.